who wants to throw it away. Let them know that no Nigerian is more Nigerian than any Nigerian. We will stop the stealing and start the giving. Is waiting. Um, first of all, it is an honor to be here, uh, Your Excellency. Thank you so much for for listening to the voice of the youth and attending this this forum. We really appreciate that. Thank you. My, Anytime. Um, so, my question goes as thus: because you've answered one of the questions that I had in mind about the entertainment industry, especially with regards to Nollywood. Um, but, sir, we know that many Nigerian youth are leaving the country, uh, primarily because of our you know, worsening economy, which has been fostered by bad economic policies by both the executive arm of the government as well as the CBN. Uh, this would not have been the case if Nigerian youth had globally relevant skills that could earn them foreign exchange and also if this system actually allowed us to carry out transactions seamlessly across borders. It's very challenging to do business outside, um, you know, from outside the country to earn income from outside the country. Uh, please, sir, uh, so the, for my first question, it is what steps could you possibly take to, first of all, reverse this drain, this our youth leaving the country in droves, and also um, what steps would um, help to improve our ability to do business outside the country, even while we are living in the country? Um, for my second uh, question, sir, uh, from 1967 to 1970, um, even though I'm a student of engineering, I've, I'm a lover of history. Um, Nigeria went through a civil war which especially claimed the lives of millions of Igbo people. Since then, till now, the federal government has hardly acknowledged this monumental disaster. So my question is, how would you finally seek justice for the lives that were lost during the Biafran genocide? Thank you very much, sir. Well, I have three questions now. Two questions. One has to do with the Nigerian youth and the economy. No, one has to do with Nigerian youth. Number two is how, how we can continue business exactly. outside Nigeria. Yes, sir. Number three is seeking justice for yes, those sir. who are killed in the past. So that was our said three questions. Question number one, there's nothing you can do to reverse people leaving the country, except to have a country that is well governed one by securing it people cannot continue to live in an insecure place ensure that you create an enabling environment where people can live and thrive so a society of law and order a society where people can genuinely work hard and earn a decent living. You can't ask people when you're not doing the right things to just sit down and die. They need to go where they have to earn a living and everything because they have to live. So for me, it is important that people understand that to get them to come back is to reverse that trend, to ensure that A, Things are working, they're secured, so they can live. Things are working. They have a viable opportunity to earn a living. Number two is that people want to live here and do business outside. I'm actually a bit, a bit astonished by that. We are looking for people to work outside and earn dollars. We want every penny. I will even, I'm not even going to be uh, giving them the opportunity. I'll be the leader 
I'll be make sure I escort them to where they will do the business. He said, I'm looking for everybody that can earn a dollar. He said, forget I'm a businessman. Every opportunity to earn money will be supported for me, by me, personally. Where well, I am as a governor, I look for anybody who was ready to do anything in order for us to generate income. So there's no way I will not be able to do that. You know, I'll support that 24 hours. If you don't know today, the reason why our rate of exchange is worsening every day is because of our reserve. And your reserve is driven by your exports. And you have people who are going to end dollar. <laughs> I mean, they should be encouraged by all means. We'll do everything. When I tell you what I'm going to do by moving the country from consumption to production, you see the reason. As for the issue of those compensate those who died during the Biafra and everything, it's something, again, if you look at my broadcast of um, 15th of January this year, a little bit of broadcast where I said, Biafra war has ended 53 years ago and should be remain ended. People should not try to reenact it. And the only way to make it so that it's ended is that we now have to build a country called Nigeria. And that's why I've always said to people, I'm not contesting the election because it is turn of the Southeast. No, I don't want anybody to vote for me on that basis. I'm a proud Igbo man. I'm a proud Southeast now. But I'm even, I'm even more proud Nigeria. And my number one goal is to ensure that for 10 years from now, no Nigerian will ever say, I'm from here, I'm from here. But we'll be proud to raise this green passport and say, I'm a Nigerian. And I have what it takes to do that. It's going to be difficult. People will not be happy. But those people like you who have are committed and have genuine things you will do, will. But those who are again moving around now with too much wealth with that enterprise will not like it. Because we must get this country to work and work for those who want things to go properly like it's going for in every other country. So in compensating them, there's so many things we need to look at. Maybe we won't compensate them, but maybe we'll, there's the places where we need to apologize. I need to look at what happened in Niger Delta where their land is devastated, we're taking their oil, the place is polluted, they have no life again, they can't go to fishing, they can't do farming, they can't do everything. So there might be places that will go and say, we're sorry, we've done the wrong thing. But however, let the past be past so we can move forward. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, but I hope you're uh, not trying it's to It's so good to you. have you. Come on. <laughs> sir, what did you say, no, sir? No, no. I said I hope you're not leaving. I want you to stay around. Have hope. I won't. I'm on set right now filming. I asked for a break to come and ask you my questions, sir. That's what I'm saying. So I want, I want us to do, the, the, I'm looking for people like you. We must get this people out of this place and fix it. We must fix it. And believe me, I want people to, to believe in what I'm saying. We'll fix this. We can't go on the way we're going on now. Sir, just so that you know, we have our PVC. Ready? Thank you. Every Nigerian is armed and ready now with our PVCs. We don't need guns. Yes. We have our PVCs we don't need guns. and we're ready. We don't just ask, ask them to leave quietly. You know, if you shoot guns, you can't you can chase criminals out of the houses. They have more guns than we have. We just have to ask okay. them peacefully. So, the advocates of the youth, the advocates of the teenager, 
and the advocates of the children. I am a voice of the African child. I'm a voice of the African teenager. I'm a voice of our African youth. Permit me to say, Una, Una, thief our destiny. Una can't give us hopelessness. Una can't give up Ooh. poverty and lack. And because we won't survive, we can't become Yahoo Yahoo. Which, which one? Which one? Are, what question are you asking? No worry, make I finish. I will ask my question. The person that has come in, or the one that, the person that was that has been there, or the person that is now campaigning to come. Everybody since nineteen sixty. Now that they thief us. That is, they can't turn us to Yahoo Yahoo boys and girls. They turn us to Boko Haram. They turn us to kidnapper. They turn us to all these things where Papa God not create us to be. So, as you want, make we give you jobs. So, Wes, we want to know your plans for us. Because when Boo Boo go to, uh, we have for CNN, they ask and say, the youth population is growing. What is your plan for your youth population? You can't begin to tell us about uh, uh, climate change. Now that day, my hair scatter say these people not even get us on the agenda at all. And now, before you come, in 2019, when I wanted to start my charity organization, when I heard it clearly from the Lord that I need to join forces to go and build a new Nigeria, I was asking, where do I start from? But he told me clearly, a new Nigeria is possible. So when in 2022, you got a shout, a new Nigeria, I know that I hear from Papa God very well. So my question to you be say, number one, make a first confess one thing, no. I know 100% support you. Yes, Nigel will I be my man. But all my children gravitate to you. And as a good mama, when I be, I support my children anyhow. Sure, your children. But my question be say, when did I not support you first? You tell me, say, I think we'll be your mentor. How can somebody, when he spent our 16 billion, he pay company 16 billion, they can't give us darkness. You say now your mentor. How can somebody, when he send night, they sell property for free? And don't property collapse. People, when they do work for them, they become jobless and hopeless. You say now your mentor. So you can answer me that question. Then the other okay. woman are not in, in, like you. You tell me that if you enter office, you not go probe these people when thief everything from us. My question to you, Augusta, when they apply for our job, if Nigeria and your company, you can't give out to people since 1960. They call the manager thief and thief and thief and so that your children can't lose hope for life. You can't get opportunity to collect them back. You say you not go put people in play, make it they collect our money from there. That is one question. Then the other question we say, Una, a senator, House of Red, governor, only eight years now that they serve for office. The money where they they pay them, he passed money when they put for education. And yet now education will be the future of our children. What did you go do about that salary? Because everybody must collect minimum wage. No head pass with one head. Then how can they spend only eight years for office? They go come collect pension for life. And yet my papa and mama, when you suffer for 35 years, we are not pay them. Even the peanut one that they pay them for retirement. They go go queue up. Can't even die in the process. Who does that? So you see this money when they keep them for us of assembly. When they make them, they thief. They do everything to enter into power. We won't slash them down to minimum wage. Every allowance is, we go put them for police. We go put them for military. We go put them for school. Go look at our school. Children go, they sit down for inside water, they go primary school. Is that sellers when you go to school? Now so primary school be, Nice and water that they learn. Nice and that they, they do secondary school. We not going to turn our children to non-entity. We not going to say they not do yahoo yahoo. If we not change things, eh? 
I go tell them they do yahoo yahoo the more. In fact, none of them are going to come because they do yahoo yahoo for their house. All of them are going to the question, but the question, the aggression, the aggression is not needed. Leave me, my brother. No, my question. Ask the question now. Leave me, my brother. There's a crazy person, not the shame. I'm not a shame for you. And they are saying so. And they shame for Nigeria. You know why? Because we are intelligent. We are smart. Everything where we need to become a great nation, Papa God given to us. But our case can be like the woman when they sell rap for market. In the in children come they wear rack. Now shame. Can you let him answer the question? Can you let him answer the question? Huh? Okay. Hey, what? Excellency. Mama, the mama. Make you cool down. <laughs> if I had known, I thought I forgot. And you know, say, you said that God day of the missile. I did one time. <laughs> If I don't say Papa, they come. I will not end this thing. Where we, where we want to end that world? This guy. Papa. I'm so, I will not pass this interview. Hey, <laughs> 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 show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mama, make a try small. You have every right to be annoyed. You have every right to be upset. We are all upset. The country has all the potential of being a very great nation. And it was a great, it's a great nation. This country has helped South Korea to pay salary. Malaysia is thriving today. But Malaysia once came here to take our palm oil in 20, 2020, 2021. Malaysia, despite having a population of less than 50 million, living on about 290 something thousand square kilometers of land, or about 300, call it 300,000 square kilometers of land, did export of about 290 million dollars, billion dollars, when our own was just about 30. So we're using 10% of what they did. That's why I said the country is not productive. It's not productive because over the years, the country has become a case where criminals have taken over. And all they do is to steal whatever it is. And they're stealing it to today. That's why I've shouted that those who are stealing our oil are people in government. Those who are still in our common world are people in government. And that's why we want to stop subsidies, stop everything, and deal with it. I've said we're a failed country because we have not invested in education and everything. What I want to do, and I want Nigerians to trust me, is to stop the stealing. And that's why I gave an example. Using an Anambra state, Nobody since this campaign started have challenged anybody to go to Anambra State where I served as a governor and see whether their money is missing. I've been the only governor who have served a state in Nigeria apart from Yeradua that left about 5 billion naira. I left 75 equivalent of 75 billion. Even if anybody wants to doubt, I left in cash. 
150 million dollars, which you know the equivalent of what it is today, at 600 naira, that is 90 billion. And he had used some threats. And at the same time, I left in naira over 30 billion. And nobody put a gun in my head. Every other person who left office the time I left had gratuity or pension. When they brought it for me to sign, it is on record. But I told my speaker, I served the people of Anambra State by the grace of God. It, was, it wasn't my power that I came there. I came by his grace. Whatever I am today, it is by grace of God. It's not by my power. And I will never abuse God's grace. But I'm going home, and I can say it to anybody, and I'm brought state government has not bought me a bottle of water since I left office nine years ago. It's there. Nobody has paid me one couple. Every other place, they change their motor, they do anything. So that's what I want to start. I never said I support the thiefing. That's what I want to stop, and I'll stop it. What I said is that if you're not stealing, your wife and children are not stealing, those around you are not stealing, you stop it. I served the bank. You can go and ask the bank. I have never defaulted in any loan. I have never taken their money. I was a director, chairman of Security and Exchange Commission. It's a federal government agency. You can go there and ask them every allowance, everything they paid me, whether it's housing, anything, motor, everything, I did not take it. They're here in Abuja. You can go to them. So I've remained that consistent. And I don't intend to change from it. It's even more critical now. I didn't say I will not probe or jail those who have stolen money. No. What I say and I stand by it, if you close your shop and chasing thieves, by the time you come back, you would have lost what is remaining in the shop because they will expire and you lose customer. I'm a trader. Your shop has to be open and you're getting more customers. And you make sure that you're selling the existing goods and don't spend more time in chasing thieves. Because whatever a thief is stolen, some of it they have spent there's a likelihood you will not recover everything. I'll be very careful. What I want to stop is stop people from stealing any longer. Look at the government that came in and said they want to chase thief. People stole more. I want to stop people from stealing any longer. And then focus on tomorrow. No matter what you think Nigeria have lost, there's more that you can get from tomorrow. I'm a believer in tomorrow. Those who are consumed by yesterday and today will miss tomorrow. Tomorrow is the only dynamic thing. I want to change Nigeria by doing the right thing. Imagine if the present government have drawn the line, like I always say, and use the resources, including the borrowed resources, to invest in the future. Would have been far better, better. In 2015, we were owing about 15 trillion. Our per capita is about 2,550. Today we are owing 75 trillion. Our per capita is 2,000. I would have doubled that by focusing on tomorrow. I want to fix the education. I want to fix health. And that is why I said I'm not going to be consumed by tomorrow. So don't close your shop and be chasing thieves. Look at it tomorrow. God did not give us eyes to look back. He gave us eyes to look front. Everything I've learned in my life, whether to drive or to bicycle, they'll tell you, look forward. And I've always looked forward. I don't look back. No matter what happens in the back. 
As for the person that said is my mentor, it's not a problem. Atiku remains a respected senior brother for the rest of my life. Even if my senior brother has his own fault or anything, he remains my senior brother. I always respect him because God allowed him to be my senior brother. And I respect that. What I said is that in this business of good politics, that I pass through his team. If you are apprentice in what we call Igbo type of trading, you learn from too many people who have grouped you up. And when all of them goes, they settle you. You start the same trade and everything. You might not necessarily sell the way they are selling their own. You might be selling differently, you know. So that is where they go. I passed through his hand. I learned things from him. I respect him. I have so many things, and he will remain so. There's one other, one or two other people who I passed through their hand. I learned what they are doing. All combined, I'm selling my own, in my own style. I don't question how they're selling their own. But I, I remain respectful of their own listing. We're all looking for customer. It depends on who the customer wants to buy. If you want to buy a brilliant, here I am to sell it to you. If you want to buy a ticket, he sells it to you. If you want to buy a Miller cup, he sells it to you. So we have our product with their names clearly spelled. Whichever one you want to buy, it's it. I'm selling my own. Yeah, okay. Um, Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. President. Uh, it's good to have you here. Uh, thanks so much for being very, very decisive and precise about all the things you plan and you intend to execute once you get into office. Uh, you mentioned something um, severally about the CBN not being a problem, that it's the FX and stuff like that. Well, uh, I studied adult political science from the University of Benin, and it's quite bothering and concerning that, like you said, competence is what we lack, and we need people with passion that are patriotic in the leadership position. But over time, we've had people from every ends of affair just getting political offices and political positions so so i graduated from school i didn't wait for the government i decided to start my own business so i'm into entrepreneurship sir and first thing this year 2023 that it's us it's my business first and i'm speaking on behalf of a whole lot of nigerian youth right now was cbn restricting card payment through mastercard visa card I'm sure I'm not the, we, a whole lot of businesses have been suffering from this. And you mentioned CBN is not a problem, but their policies keep on injuring entrepreneurship. Because, okay, so we couldn't get jobs, right? And we couldn't get the right set of things we felt like we deserve. So we decided to create our own. And we decided to keep our heads on that. On that. We decided to survive. But when we have things like card restrictions and startup limitations, bordering into the existence of our of our businesses sir uh mr president how what are the steps you intend to take first of all tackling these policies that discourage startup creation and lucration in nigeria because that is the reason why all of you are leaving i myself for the first time in my life i started considering leaving because i'm like how much should this business go work like this you know you can't really even dream five years into the future ten years into the future that's my that that's my question, sir. Thank you very much, my sister. Let me tell you why I said I didn't say CBN is not a problem. I said the physical, you know, CBN is supposed to be driving the monetary policy. The physical space is the government. They are actually in charge. What CBN is doing now, which is why they're having to do what they're doing is that it's like, you know, the way we are in Nigeria now is that the physical space is weak. It's like when they remove the people who are supposed to bring a particular wing, which is more important than everything, and they now 
and so somewhere maybe in football if you remove the the people who are supposed to be first eleven and you just bring a second player that people run all over the place doing the work cbn is a multi space it's not doing what the physical side is supposed to be doing so they are not into farming into manufacturing in, nobody actually knows what who is doing what and they are exactly. trying to survive because they are not the right signals what drives a nation is the physical space because that's where the elected president is that's where the elected people are they are the ones that will decide where they're going why the monetary people are independent if you look at here down cpn is not only doing the monetary uh, thing they're supposed to be doing sure. when they brought a rice party in abuja there are some said they remain grateful to the CBN government. They didn't even mention the Ministry of Agriculture. They didn't even mention the Federal Bank of Agriculture. CBN has nothing to do with the rice party. In the real well, sense of it. Thank you. But because those who are supposed to do it are not doing it, they now find themselves cultivating rice or supporting rice farmers. It's like now today they say NNPC is that constructing road. NNPC is a is a is a, is a, a company owned by government who is supposed to generate revenue, give to government to be shared in the three tiers of government. So if they have tax, they are not while Valentine and company can go to use and go for tax this thing to use it to construct road, a company owned by government. Cannot go to the same thing and be given the same approval, they are not into road construction. So the whole thing is modeled up and we're trying to fix it. What we want to do is to start doing the right thing. And that's what I said. If I'm here, people will stay in their wing, play their wing, be supervised to doing their wing. And if there's a problem, you deal with it. Because the country is going through too many problems. A lack of clear leadership. People are doing what they're not supposed to do. So CBN is not a problem. People say, oh, God, it's actually trying to help. But it happened because the people who are supposed to play other ways are empty. It's like they've given them, they've run out of there, not the longer in the field. So it's one playing back, forward, goalkeeper, everything. It can work. <laughs>